Welcome back buds. It's the next project I picked up. It's a conference table. Just needs a quick refinish. Bring it back to life. Looks like we might have a mahogany burl type of top. Nice red mahogany finish. Gonna try to keep the color very similar. The legs. The bases have seen better days. We're gonna make those black. We'll do a black stain lacquer finish over that. You know I don't like the paint. Wood should be finished, not painted. So, this is looking pretty good. I think this will be a fairly easy, straightforward one, as long as everything goes as planned. I think what I'll do to get started on this one, I'll just get the base, you know, separate the base from the top, get those bases sanded, get the stain on that, get that drying so I can get a finish on it. I don't think I'm gonna put a stain on this. I think I'm gonna do a tone, a tone finish. Cause I'm not sure how deep some of these gouges are. I don't want the stain to, to make those gouges pop because I do want this I don't want to keep this character. I want that all gone. That that should be looking. I want this to look like a new table. So I think I'll do a tone finish to be safe with that. So I'll get this top off. Get that stripped. Get it sand. I'll probably have to steam out a lot of that. This should look pretty good though. We'll take it from there. So here I have one of the bases off of the table and I think what I'm going to try to do, this just has a really thin mahogany veneer on and I think I might just be able to just sand it. It doesn't seem like a lot of finish on it and it's going to get a black stain so it, nothing has to be perfect. It just has to get the, you know, the finish off to take the stain and the new finish. So I'm going to take a sander here, test it out, see how it works. As you can see that there, just a little bit of 150 grit on the disc sander. It takes that right off. So I'm not even gonna mess with any stripper on these. I'm just gonna sand them clean. Shouldn't take too long. I don't have to smell any fumes today, which is always a plus. So once I get these sanded, I can slap some stain on it and call it a day. Well, there it is, all sanded. Quite a bit of that blistering there. Looks like it might have got wet at one point. You can see that. So it's just like a million little high spots there. When I was hitting that with a sander, it just all, they knocked down pretty quick. Some of that veneer was eating through. Once again, not really worried about it. If this was like a really fine antique table base, obviously a lot more care would have been taken. These would have all been re-glued down or the veneer would have just been replaced. But I mean, this is gonna be black. Never gonna see this. It's gonna look great no matter you know what the under it is. As long as I can have some wood grain to work with here, you know, just to have that. Like I said, I don't want to paint it black. I do want it, you know, to maintain a little bit of the wood look. So, this should be fine. It's all fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna look great. 
Now I just have to sand the other one. I'll get to the staining. Was just sanding away here and I made a little buddy. Alrighty now, here they are. Hand sanded down to 220. All ready to get a little stain on them. got all that black stain on there it's letting it dry a little bit before I wipe any off I might actually not even wipe any off just kind of run the brush take my, my brush and then I will just brush it a little bit with that and I'll let it set up a day and I'll come back maybe after 24 hours or so and then just hit it with the brush again, maybe a little rag lightly just to get any remaining off. But I don't want to wipe it off like you typically would with a stain. So it would just take too much off. And they'd be too brown, they wouldn't be black enough. But once this all sets up and dries, you're gonna see a little bit of the grain through there. I think they'll look pretty nice that way. So here's a little tip of the day. Since I am so messy, I usually get stain all over my hands. And I found recently, if you take a little bit of the Gojo cleaner, it has, especially the one with the pumice in, works a lot better. But uh, it really cleans your hands up pretty good. I just had stain all over my hands, but it cleans them right off. No stain. It's kind of, I guess, just because it's oil base. And that's made for like mechanics or whatever, cleaning grease off your hands. So why not work with that too? So give it a whirl. Works pretty good. Well, I let it dry overnight. I slept on it. I thought about it. And wiped a little bit more of that stain off of there. This looks awful. There is no chance that I'm going to let this out of my shop like this. So... I'm going to have to sand these bubbles out of the veneer. Maybe put a little bit of filler as needed. Then I'm just going to end up having to just spray paint it black. Well, that sure went from bad to really bad really fast. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> so, I realized that those bubbles... That one, it's not terrible. It's not good either. But this one, it was really, really, really bubbled. Really bad. So, I thought it would be a good idea just to sand a veneer off and then just paint, you know, the under, whatever it was under there. But it turns out it's just horrible, really cheap. I don't know if it's cheap, but I mean, it's just really, it's just particle board like that. Uh, it's like cardboard, so it's like sanding paper. So it's just, do, do, do. I put, I don't even want to tell you what I put. I put so much stuff on here trying to get it leveled out. Yeah, that would never work. You would see that. It would look like that. Bucko's eating himself. Do you need to see a doctor, Buck? So, what I did, Bucko and I went up to the store and I got a sheet of, uh, I think it's like a 16th of an inch, I think they call it five millimeter plywood. I think it's thin enough 
that I should be able to go ahead and bend it around there, glue it on, just re-veneer it. I mean, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to order some veneer, find some veneer. It's just turning into a little bit of a mess here, bud. But we'll make it work. Okay, well, I slept on it again. <laughs> and not very happy with this one either. That is about a sixteenth of an inch, no, that's probably an eighth inch, yeah, about an eighth inch plywood. Way too thick to make that curve. That'll probably come off of there. If I glued that, I don't know. It's gonna come off someday. And I just don't want that, don't want that to happen. And veneer's out of the question because where I live, you can't just run out to the store and buy some veneer. So, and I'm running out of time. Uh, I think third time's a charm. So I went to the store and I bought some quick drying, like a spackle type putty, and I am just gonna paint it. So what I'm gonna do is just do a quick once over sanding, just rough it up. Then I will give a nice thin skim coat of that spackle putty type stuff. Give that a sand, that should get rid of the low spots. Should level it out a good bit. Then I got some paint, and I'm just gonna brush that on brush stroke should hide a majority of the uh, the dips and valleys and then do a little clear of that should be good should be good so let's give it a whirl okay Here's where I'm at now. I just sanded that there with the old disc sander, a little bit of, I think I had 60 grit on there just to get some of that veneer off best I could because those little bubbles, anywhere there was a bubble, that just would affect that finish big time. And then the second you broke through the bubble, it's just, it's a paperback veneer. I think what happened in the first place, that paperback veneer, it didn't really adhere, you know, since it's such a tight radius and everything, you know, probably when they did it in the factory, just didn't adhere right, and over time, you know, from humidity or whatever, it just started to bubble like that. So, yeah, I mean, when I'm sanding it, it's just like, it's like sanding, uh, paper cardboard it's just you can't do it it just keeps coming in layers it just gets worse the more you do so i just hit it real quick by hand now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to paint it just going to take a brush with the black paint go over it i'm going to see how that turns out and then i can fill in any low spots It'll be easier to see once it's painted. You can scuff it up, fill the low spots with the filler, then do the final, you know, probably, this is probably gonna take at least three coats of paint, then I'm still gonna do a clear coat over that. Now that I have these two train wrecks drying, I should probably start stripping the table.
Got all this stripper on. Put the sheet of plastic over there. The reason I do that, that keeps that stripper wet, keeps it active longer. That's your tip of the day, bud. So I'm gonna let this sit for probably, let's say close to an hour. It's lunchtime, so time to eat some lunch. And then, also gonna let these sit a little bit. I think they're just about dry. And I'll scuff them up. Hit them with another coat. But uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. I think the finish is gonna come off all right. No problems with this one, fingers crossed. Well, I wait for that stripper to dry, I went ahead and I scuffed up, blocked down 220, both bases. Gonna get ready here, got them all cleaned up. Gonna do the second coat. I'll let those set up. They're actually not looking too bad after two coats. I think a third will probably do it. So I'll let that set up and get the plastic off of here and start uh, scraping that stripper off and see how we look on that. I first laid eyes on this butte I was kind of afraid because it sort of looked like somebody had tried to just fix it up clean it up with a little coat of poly so now that I got the stripper barely touches that I mean this is fairly fresh so it's even you know harder to get off because it was fresher you know speak like five ten years you know maybe tops but uh yeah i mean it's just like it's just like gummy gummy plastic and about the only way i'm gonna get it all off of here is by scraping it by hand i can't really sand it because i don't think this veneer is very thick and if i burn through this veneer i am I'm really screwed, so that's where I'm at. I'm just gonna have to scrape away, then uh, do some sanding. And there's just one little repair right there, not too bad. Fill that in, touch it out. Other than that, everything's looking good. Just takes a little bit of time and elbow grease though. It's starting to get there some spots seem to want to come off a little better than others this whole area right here does not want to budge so I think what I'm gonna do that's all cleaning up pretty good what I might do is just hit it with a little bit more stripper let it sit a little bit and see if that'll do anything now that maybe just scraping it opening up the opening up the finish a little bit maybe the stripper can get into it a little better all right I brushed on just for half of the table so if it doesn't work there's no sense in spending all that time and wasting all that stripper but this time 
does seem like this stripper is working a little better this time. See it bubbling up a lot of a lot of that uh, a lot of that finish. I think it is going to come off a lot easier this time. Well, let it sit a couple more minutes, and we'll find out. I did use a different stripper. I guess the moral of the story, don't trust cheap strippers. <laughs> they just don't work as good. You need a good, expensive stripper. Those cheap ones are no good for you, bud. They'll do you dirty every time. See that turned out pretty good. Cleaned up rather nicely. It's a little bit here and there. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of thinner, give it a little scrub down with some steel wool, and just wipe it down with a, a rag and thinner. All right, there, buds. I got the table flipped over, ready to give this just a quick sanding. Nothing special, nothing fancy. Then I'll get a little seal coat sprayed on that, just to seal it up. Then I'll flip it back over, then do the final finish sanding on the top, and then get the spraying on that. I got the tabletop flipped back over. That bottom side's all done, all dry. I just uh, went around the table here with a light, got down real close to it, and I can see wherever there would be a little, you know, a little scratch, a little dent, a little indentation, anywhere there was any of that put a little sticky note to remind myself and I'm gonna go around here now and steam all those little spots out and then I'll start to sand
now that I have that the edge all sanded up all that's left is to finish sanding the top there I got all those little dents and scratches steamed out I had a couple spots down at the end there had a little bit of finish left on that I just cleaned up with a little bit of stripper I just have that one little spot there that needs a little bit a little bit of care taken when I sand that so typically when I sand any type of like a burl tabletop I used to work at a shop with well, the first shop I ever worked at the guy would want me to sand every single thing with the grain anywhere there was I mean like on this table you have grain going this way this way the burl and then this way this whole edge goes this way so what I like to do is to pick a direction and stick with it especially on these burl tops and especially since I'm not staining it you know run the risk of any stain getting down in the, the scratch you know the sanding lines you'll never see it I like to just pick one direction stick with it I think if you're gonna ever go along here and sand you know that direction then come in take care to sand that direction you're never gonna know that you did that I think if you do things like that you probably have people locked in your basement and you might have a hair collection so what I like to do just take one direction stick with it I'll hit it first with a low speed 150 on the disc sander just to knock anything down that needs knocked down then I'll finish it up with the big block and the 220 by hand and they'll be ready for finish Now that I got that all hand sanded with a block with 220, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a good wipe down with a rag and some naphtha. That'll get rid of any oils or anything left in there that might create any problems in my final finish. Most times I've ever sprayed any of these kind of uh, walnut burl type finishes. They tend to hold a lot more oil than other woods and I get a lot of fish eyes. So I use a good degreaser like naphtha to prevent that. If you don't know what fish eye is, I'll put a little picture up there so you can see what I'm talking about. And then once I get this all wiped out, I'll just, uh, do a little clean up around the shop and get ready for spring. Alrighty now, buds. Now is my favorite time of the whole process when I finally get to spray, see everything pop and what it's really going to look like. I got the two bases set up here and the table over there. Got my fans running, sucking out any last dust. I'm all swept up, ready to roll. I'm just going to put the seal coat on. And like I said, yeah, I did 
paint those bases there. That is just an acrylic latex paint. It is eggshell. I brushed it on. Now I'm going to spray lacquer over it. Everybody says you can't do it, but sometimes you got to just know a trick or two. So I'm going to go ahead, let this air out a little bit more, let the fan pull out any last dust hanging out, and I'll get to spraying. Now that I have the sealer all sanded, I'm going to go ahead and do this one little touch up I have on here from this where the veneer was out and I had to fill it in. For the touch up, I'm going to take took about one to one lacquer to thinner and then I put a few drops of the dye, it's a brown mahogany dye that I'm going to use as the toner toner coat. And I'm just going to touch this in with this before I spray the toner coat. And it should all just flow together and match. be too dark. I like to do a lot of little strokes there. So we'll sort of mimic that grain of the veneer. We'll go a little bit outside there.
are with another table all ready to head home. I think this one turned out pretty good, considering I had to use some paint. We don't like the paint, do we, Buck? But in the long run, sometimes you learn that, you know, sometimes maybe the easiest way is the best way. And uh, should be any chipping or anything in the near future. I got a couple of good coats of lacquer over top of that. And uh, maybe I'll, in the next video, I'll show you a little trick I do to put some lacquer over latex. But in the meantime, just gonna head home. Till the next one, thanks for watching, stay tuned, like and subscribe, follow along with me and Bucko, we'll see you then.